in this short video, which is really for the beginners in pathology, I'm going to demonstrate a, a nice example of actinic keratosis, which was kindly shared with me by Dr. Antonina Kalmakova of CSD Healthcare. Now, actinic keratosis are extremely common lesions which develop on the sun damage skin, uh, particularly on the, about the face, on the scalp if one's bald, and on the, the arms and the backs of the hands. I just want to straighten this one and then we'll have a, have a look at it. Um, they, they are important obviously because if they're left un, 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 untreated then they have the propensity to evolve into an invasive squamous carcinoma. And they form a very large part of our diagnostic work workload. I just want to enlarge this slightly. Um, if we look at this view first of all, this is a prototypic actinic keratosis. They, they present um, with a sort of a pyramidal silhouette Obviously, the base lies along the affected epidermis, and then there is there is usually a lot of keratinization, and so they form a crust on on the top, and this typically has this rather V-shaped outline, and so you can see that the in this example there's a, almost a a perfect pyramid. But uh, I want to go across here to begin looking at the at the lesion. Now, um, actinic keratoses show varying degrees of dysplasia of the overlying epidermis, as I'll show you in a moment or two. Now, the first thing you'll see notice is there's this tremendous solar elastosis. So this has obviously been been cooked very vigorously in the sun, and the epidermis appears rather thin or atrophic. And as we work our way into the lesion, you can see the beginnings of uh, a rather more basophilic population of cells in the lower part of the epidermis. And if I enlarge this slightly, uh, one, one can make out uh, there is normal epidermis there, and as we work our way along, we can see that there's dysplasia affecting the lower epidermis. The normal population has been replaced by a, a rather basophilic cell population and this impaired maturation towards the top. Now, the other thing you can see here is that there's a, there's a suggestion of uh, um, proliferation into the underlying dermis, and this is typical of a proliferative actinic keratosis. I don't think there's any evidence of invasion at this point. I think if we looked at serial sections, these, these would all join up into the overlying epidermal lesion. Now, we do sometimes get a bit uh, caught up as to whether something's microinvasive or just a proliferative AK, and I don't think it really matters. The important point is that if it's excised, it's not going to do anything either way, so it's not something to get too fussed about. Occasionally, one can look at this type of a field and think, gosh, I'm not sure whether I'm looking at an actinic keratosis or um, a, a superficial BCC. And if that happens and you really aren't certain, then if you do BCL2 and Burr EP4, they will be positive in basal cell carcinoma and negative in uh, actinic keratosis. So you can solve the problem easily if you're stuck. Now, uh, another feature that we're going to have a look at is the keratinization. Typically, the keratin layer overlying the follicular sebaceous ostea and the sweat ducts shows hyperkeratosis, but not parakeratosis, whereas overlying the dysplastic epithelium, one tends to see parakeratosis, as you see in that field. That's not a hard and fast rule, because if I go back here, 
one can see that, that there is, well, actually, there's hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis overlying this aspect of the lesion. Now, I want to go down in magnification again, and we're going to look at this piece here, which is quite interesting because it shows some different features. I'm going to have to rotate it all, all the way around to get it the right way up there. Now, if we look at this, we can see there's something going along, going on on the left-hand side of the lesion, and we'll have a look at that in more detail. And in fact, we can see there's a very heavy uh, infiltrate of a mixture of lymphocytes and plasma cells. If I go to high magnification there. Now, this might make you wonder whether there's an invasive component, although here I think it's just a bit of a proliferative AK. Uh, but at this might prompt you to look at levels, just in case there's something more significant uh, further or deeper into the block. Now, here we see a nice feature uh, that we see in actinic keratosis. Um, the follicular and, and uh, sweat ducts themselves are not affected, but very typically in an actinic keratosis, the dysplastic epithelium follows around the outside of the follicle, and, and you can see that very nicely there, following all the way around. And I think there's another field where it's even more dramatic, or perhaps it's one it's on one of the other cuts. Uh, we'll have a look at one of the the, the third piece of tissue because it shows something uh, that's interesting and it's quite it's quite different. Uh, so this was the original piece of tissue, and we'll look at this in higher power, and it shows it shows very nicely a variant that you can sometimes see in an inactinic keratosis and this is the acantholytic variant and here we can see that acantholysis has resulted in separation of the basal layer of the epidermis from the overlying uh, layers so this is acantholysis and this is of importance because it may be a precursor to acantholytic squamous cell carcinoma. And this is what I was looking for here. This is beautiful, that where you can see uh, dysplastic epithelium going all the way around, and then it's forming a sheath around the follicular sebaceous orifice there. You can see more of it there and uh, you can see more of it there. And this is of importance because if this lesion was treated with a, a shave biopsy, and let's say you, you cut across, the shave went across there, the chances are some of this epithelium will be left behind and so it can regrow and you'll get your actinic keratosis back again. So that's just a very short video um, outlining a few points of actinic, about actinic keratosis. I hope this is of some help to you. Thank you very much for your attention.